Ready? Yeah. <laughs> 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 podcast where we're just Adam, 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 Adam. <laughs> you went ready? Oh, you went what? Uh, it froze. <laughs> Literally is starting. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Encore Offstage podcast and our conversational podcast where we discuss all things theatre with me, Adam Guest. With me, Ben Bradley. And me, Lucy Gazard. Hello, everybody. How are we Hello. doing? Very well, thank yeah, you. Very well. well good yeah good thank you yeah yeah yeah. exciting news about uh lockdown and everything I you know yeah. so uh, so it should be good should be good Absolutely. um and uh, looking forward to things starting to come back obviously we're going to take it a bit easier but you know it's going to be nice to get to some sort of you know end point i think it feels like nice. things are starting to move in the right direction for the first yes. time which is Definitely. fantastic exactly so ben you've got a topic for us today haven't you I have. I'm going to be talking to you about your dream roles. Oh. Oh. Okay, excellent. And Lucy, you're going to be chatting to somebody later on, aren't you? I am indeed. I'll be chatting to the wonderful Ben Ward later today. Excellent. Mm-hmm. This is good. And I've got a quiz for you guys. So do you want to start with that? Let's start with a quiz. Let's get warmed up with okay. a theatre quiz. It's been a while. Okay, well... What I thought today was with a theatre quiz, just to get you all warmed up, is I would do theatre based on animals. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. So, don't worry. It's not too hard. There's 10 questions. Okay. Now, if you want to answer straight away, you can do. All right. Um, Which is probably good, because if you don't, then there's no point to the podcast. So, we're all right. So, question number one. But we need to buzz in, don't we? If you want to buzz in, or you can just go for it if you want. Right. We need to hear. Should we do. Let's, let's buzz in there. Lucy, have you got a buzzer with you? I don't have a buzzer with me, so I'm going to go. Ca-ca! Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben, what's your animal sound going to be? Uh, it, it's not. Um, it's going to be my usual new. Ben, fa- no, what's your no. animal sound no, going no, to no, be? No, 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 no. You're not forcing me into this. I, I am. I no, am. I'm not, not doing the quiz until you tell me what your animal sound's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the weirdest sound. sound of that yeah. One. yeah, yes, it's it's for new, it's for new, it's for new buzzard. Um, the new buzzard. Yes, the buzzard, the buzzard, the buzzard. Okay. Buzz, yes, there we go. Right. Oh okay. wow, so, it's, it's early morning. That's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. We're all good. <laughs> padding, padding, padding. Good. Question number one. <laughs> yes. What is the name of the main horse in War Horse? <laughs> I heard buzzard first. Joey. It is Joey. Yes, very good. Very good. Excellent. Go on, Lucy. Go on. Keep off the mark. Question number two. What is the tribe of cats in Cats? <coughs> I heard I heard the caca first. Jellicles. The Jellicles. Very good. That's one point apiece. Okay. Ben, you need to catch up. Come on. I'm all right. He's going to do better than me in this. Don't know why he's worried. <laughs> Question number three. The story in Honk, the musical, is based on what? Ta-da! Lucy. The Ugly Duckling. It is The Ugly Duckling, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know Honk. Ah. Uh, it's really good music. Really um, it's apparently it's based on the uh, Ugly Duckling. So there you go. I never knew that. There we go. Now this next one, it gives a particular type of animal, right? But I will accept a generalisation because, to be honest, I didn't know it was that when I looked at the question. So, question number four: What kind of animal is Rafiki? Kaka. He's a mandrill. Very good. Yeah, well done. Most yeah, a mandrill. People, yeah, because most people would say he's a baboon, but he's actually a mandrill. Ah, well done. Okay, excellent. Look at that. Yeah. There oh, I dear. see. This is very oh, left behind. Why I keep doing this like I'm <laughs> I was going to say, you don't need to add the wings. It's fine. It's all I, good. We, we love the wings. I think we the love the wings. Yeah. 
for those that can't see this, is literally you're raising your arms up like this. Okay, I was like, you're not going to take off, Lucy. You're all right. Okay, right. So, question number five. Which two famous actors headed the bill of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof at the Apollo in 2017? Oh. Mm. No, it wasn't that. I feel like I should know it. <laughs> I think I do, but I don't. I don't know. If, if I, can I give you a clue? Yeah. One of them's a local boy. Ooh. That makes it harder. Right, we've got dead air now, because none of us can... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you two. Looking at you t- I'm enjoying watching you two think. Oh, so... This the, the there's a male and a female. Yeah. Okay. The male uh, appeared alongside Angelina Jolie, and he's done a few other bits. He's a Derby boy. There's people at home now going shouting, going, "I know exactly who it is." Give up. Uh, Lucy's just gone silent. I I. Think... I, I think I know who the woman was, but I'm not sure who the man is. Was the woman... Take a punt. Take a punt. Dig your bread in, as my dad used to say. Sienna Dig your bread Miller. In. Sienna Miller is the, is the girl, yes. Absolutely. And the male. It was quite infamous because there was a, there was a showering scene on stage and, and everybody was like, ooh, ooh. Well, I was anyway. Um... I think I know his first name, but I can't remember his last name. What do you think his first name is? Jack. It is Jack. It is Jack. So his surname is? Go on, Ben. (laughs) And the Beanstalk. No. (laughs) No idea. Any ideas? Either of you? No, you're going to have to tell me. Jack O'Connell. Oh, bloody hell. That was was a hard one. That was was a really hard hard question. Oh, you, you wait. You wait. Oh, God. Um, number six. What is Elle's dog called in Legally Blonde? Oh, oh. Bruiser. It is Bruiser. Very good. Did, was that, Lucy has an unfair advantage. Didn't Lucy's dogs play? I was going to say, Lucy has an unfair advantage. Oh, my, my little Chihuahua Tallulah played Bruiser and Preston played um, the big one who, um, the big dog that gets owned. <laughs> by Paul, by Paul <laughs> that's just unfair advantage yeah, that is unfair advantage <laughs> so I'm going to disallow that point Lucy oh. Um, <laughs> no I'm not I'm gonna... oh damn I was going to say I thought <laughs> guilty for a second no 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 it's fine number seven what kind of animal is Dr Dillamond in Wicked oh caca oh, he's a goat is. he is a goat yes very good he's a goat I'm being yeah. absolutely Lucy's wiping the floor with me. You've got three more questions to try and catch up, Ben. Don't worry, you're all right. Number eight. What two animals are being argued about in the opening song of Fiddler and the Roof? I don't know Fiddler on the Roof well enough. But they should do. Um, oh. Any ideas? Oh, Lucy? Oh, Car, I'm going to guess a cat and a dog. I don't know. No, it's not a cat and a dog. Ben, any ideas? If you don't know, you might as well guess. I've got absolutely no idea, so I'm going to guess cat and a bird. Bird? No, it is actually a horse and a mule. Oh, my (sighs) freaking God. I actually just said to you, didn't I, Ben, if it was that, I'd be so annoyed. (laughs) (laughs) So there you are, you see. Okay, so question number nine. What musical with an animal in its title, won the Olivier Award for Best New Musical in 2017. Any ideas? Um, so it's got an animal in the title. Oh, Kaka, I'm going to stab in the dark and just say Go Dogfight. I don't think it is that. I think that was... No, my... Dogfight was, was earlier. Yeah, was not... earlier. I have no idea. <laughs> Ben, any ideas? I, I think I'd know, but I'm just trying to go through it in my head. One sec. Uh, I, uh... No. No? It's not coming to if me. I said, if I said Tim Minchin? Oh, 
Um, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And the last one. The last one. Finish the famous Shakespeare stage direction. Exit pursued by. Oh, you Ben. I heard. I heard the buzzer first. A bear. It is a bear. Exit pursued by a bear. Very good. So that is the quiz. I think I didn't need to take score on that one. I think Lucy did very well on that one. But Ben, you know what? You did some really good guesses. I was really chuffed with you. That, there. Thanks. Well done. Good, good guesses. Well done. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Well done. I'm, I'm, well fe- done. I'm feeling your. Good. Your Excellent. Well done. Pat Keep pat ne- good try. Better luck next Thank time. Thank you very much. Well done. <sighs> the, the energy levels are astounding this morning, aren't they? Oh, they're great. Right. Now I think it's time we should move on to our topic. What do we all think? Yeah? Yes. Good. Do we have a choice? No. Okay. Oh, so okay. I thought I think we we talked about um, roles will never play in the first season, but I thought we could talk about our dream roles, as in roles that we, if it, if there wasn't ever an opportunity to, we would meet, we would just snap it up straight away, whether that be amateur or professional. Ooh. Shall right. we start with you, Adam? We can if you want. Yes. Um. How much you remember? One of my dream roles would be Fagin from Oliver. Oh, yes. Be I'd love to play Fagin. Um, I, ironically, I played him in school when we did the play version of Oliver. Um, and since then, I've always wanted to do it in the musical. Always. Um, so that's one. Um, I've been very lucky, really. A lot of, a lot of, Roles I wanted to play. Oh, uh, Tevier from Fiddler on the Roof. Mm-hmm. I'd love to play Tevier in Fiddler on the Roof. Um, so they're my two dream roles. Um, and I'm growing a beard for Tevier uh, and even Fagan. You know, what about, what about these roles attracts you to? Mm. I think there's a good bit of comedy. Um, they're very character-based. Quite iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, a, there's an ability to do stuff with them i think so i i think when it comes to dream roles it's a case of rather than it being a carbon copy of something that somebody's done before that but also at the same time it's trying to put your own stamp on it but paying tribute to people that have done it before as well mm-hmm. so like ron moody in um in uh, oliver and um i can't remember his name is it not uh i can't remember his name in, in the film and um fiddler but again iconic roles iconic performances uh, again because they're immortalized in film but um but yeah those those are two of my dream roles i think I, I, loads of people usually say like you know jean valjean or you know the things that are on at the minute but i prefer them more i'm a traditional boy as it were mm. um i don't mind i don't mind i can take or leave new stuff more classic stuff mm. plays wise you know um I, I was very lucky to play George in Of Mice and Men, um, which was a massive, massive dream role of mine to do. Um, some, I'd, but there's plays that dream plays I'd like to do mm-hmm. without on musicals without having to worry about the roles. But we can talk about that another time. Mm. What about you, Lucy? What would you, what would about you? What dream roles would you play? Oh God! See, so one of them I don't think sort of stereotypically I've got like the look wise for it but heather chandler oh from heather's <laughs> i just think she's got you know i like the fact that she's just a massive <laughs> but she's, also, she's also so hilariously funny like i don't think people acknowledge that she's actually got a very good comedic role in heather's as well and i just love i just love that line of sort of she's a but she's also hilarious to watch as well. So, so you'd be typecast then? I, I, I think, like, I think sort of they'd go for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been around being <laughs> dead. Sorry. Wow. I don't mean it. I don't mean that it. That really caught me off guard, that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you play well, Lucy, but not typecast. Not typecast. Yeah, exactly. So I think I'd love that. That'd be just hilarious to do. But I also, I think because it's one of my musicals I watched growing up as a child, 
Audrey from Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yes. I just absolutely love Audrey. Or failing that, I would happily be one of the narrator girls because I absolutely adored them as well when watching it. Yeah. Especially especially the little one who was like, Little Shop! I was like, yes. <laughs> you go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> I absolutely used to love her. Like I was just like, forget about everyone else. Just that one woman. <laughs> calls to me but yeah just I've, I've seemed to like sort of sort of comedic roles but I also quite like the fact that Audrey's very sweet and sad and I really like that sort of aspect as well of her I just like the sort of very sweet innocence that she portrays in that and then yeah sort of play wise I'd quite like to do sort of um I'd love to do a really dark play like Dracula not necessarily be like a main character in it, but I would really like to do something a bit sort of dark like that. Because something do, a bit horror esque. Yeah, because I do like the sort of more macabre sort of things. And again, another one where I wouldn't mind what role I got in it. Any of the women in Rocky Horror. Just oh yeah. My all time favorite. I think I think that would be one show where you just have a lot of fun doing it yeah i could see that if i if we got a chance to do rocky horror i'd be like yeah we're yeah, just gonna i would that. i'd do i'd be like i don't care I could, i'd be a tree i'd be a tree and sort of like <laughs> i don't care <laughs> just have me in it but sort of i think roles where sort of looks wise i'd i'd love to do paulette in legally blonde as well yeah again and she's just such a strong bold female character in it yeah I just think that'd be such a fun one to play. And obviously, like, who wouldn't want to be like Elphaba or Glinda? <laughs> exactly, yeah. They would be all. Awesome. What, what about you, Ben? I was just thinking about this because my number one is always, I always go to Brad in Rocky Horror for precisely the same reasons you've just given out there. Um, because it's, again, it's the same thing as comedic and quite sweet as well isn't he at times um especially with, with um, once in a while and things so uh, not good enough to play brad but definitely oh, uh, he's, he's great awesome oh no brad. Brad. um but no he's 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 one um just trying to think now because i had a list I thought, oh yes uh Tenardier in les mis mm. oh yeah. J yeah. J just to try and throw off all your classical singers just to try and annoy them a bit because <laughs> it's just one of those things where you you're given very you look at all the different actors you've played in the past and each one of them is given quite a bit of range to explore it in a different way and and bring more or different comedy depending on their own their own situations where matt lucas brought it in they changed the lyrics up to suit his characters in the past and things like that and it it it's just one of those roles where as you, i think the same thing as you said adam you can bring something so different to it and not be the same as somebody who's done it before. Yeah. And it's very character-based. Um, yes. And then I've got a weird sort of two, very oh, quite similar roles. Um, one that isn't possible because it's always played by a female, but I would, it's, I think it would be possible, is the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. I think a man could quite easily play the Wicked Witch. And I think oh, that'd be a great role. I think actually in the RSC, when they did the version, mm. they had a man playing um, Miss Gulch and uh, the Wicked Witch. Did they? So it's possible. It's yeah. possible. That that for me is one of the um, is the absolute dream roles, it's, which is why same with Trunchbull uh, from Matilda. I I love both of their roles because they're both evil for just being evil, and that's the best. That's the best role. Miss Trunchbull is the best ever i saw matilda when it originally when they did the first run and oh my god miss trunchable was i snort laughed so loud at one point people turned <laughs> <laughs> she's she's the absolute best and i i went and i um i met the actor afterwards and it i've seen it, seen it twice now and it was i actually saw the same bloke twice uh you happened to be on doing the tour and doing the the um what in london i saw that as well so it was just it, it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing character. It's an amazing costume, and the, her two songs are my two favorite musical songs of all time. Yeah. Especially "Smell of Rebellion," her act two song. Oh, it's yeah. just amazing. Uh, um, yeah. I definitely think when you're 
because I think at the moment you're probably a bit young. Yes, absolutely. But when you're older, hell yes, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, as you get older, you it's like when I was younger, there were loads of things like, oh, I'd love to play that. And then mm. as you get older, you're like, you know what? No, actually, your tastes change, and you're like, yeah. I've, it's 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 a weird one because I'm at this. I there's there's quite limited roles for someone of my age unless it's like the leading the leading male is of this age then there's no other big parts are there very famous no. parts so it, it's just a quite a difficult point to try and find anything um which is partly why uh with my own theatre company little plug uh I get a free range to do something with like that, I'm I can sorry, do whatever do you, I want. Do you want to say that again, then? What, what was uh, that? My little plug: uh, BSC Theatricals on Facebook, Instagram. Ah, oh, okay. So now, now's the time to discuss you not doing the podcast anymore. So we're fine. Uh, okay, no, don't on. worry, don't worry. I'll still be here. <laughs> um, but yeah, but something like that, which allows me the, f- the freedom of doing quite a few different roles myself stuff yeah. that i wouldn't necessarily necessarily get i'll be very careful because of what's of what we're announcing soon around the corner um but yeah i'll, I'll, I'll stop there but yeah that's they're, they're my roles excellent i can say i can say that's that's a good little thing you, you know, to get asked people in general in theater it's a, it's a bog standard question but mm. at the same time people have deep reasons as to why they want to do those roles sometimes it's because it was the first show they ever saw or you know or various different reasons so it's nice to talk about it actually so mm. i'd be interested to hear what people at home what their dream roles would be absolutely um, absolutely yeah if anybody if anybody wants to let us know then yeah drop us a message tell us who yeah. and why you'd like to do that role and any suggestions for what you think we'd be good at playing if you think well, we've mentioned our dream role, but you might have a suggestion. Not being oh. funny, but I think Adam's played so many things at this point, the list will be very small. The yeah, there's... <laughs> Adam's credit list is just, it's just too long. Um... <laughs> oh, well, let's not mention that. I'm back. That's You're right. back. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm back. Don't worry back. about me. Carry on. Good. I was listening. I could hear yeah. everything. Yeah. I could hear everything. Don't worry. So, Lucy, did you want to introduce us to your interviewee? I do indeed. So today I will be chatting to the wonderful and very talented Ben Ward. And let's hear what he has to say. Hello, everybody. And tonight I've got the very talented and wonderful Ben Ward with me. Ben, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm uh, very well. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, just enjoying a good Friday afternoon. <laughs> awesome. Now, I've got quite a few questions to go through with you, so I'll start off on an easy one. So could you just tell me and our listeners out there a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm currently a student at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama in Cardiff. I am um, I work as a, a pianist, a music director, a saxophone player and, and a teacher. Yeah, and I've just been um, really, you know, trying to build up my kind of career. So really, really varied and lots of different stuff going on, which is exciting. Mm. Now, speaking about sort of a lot of things under your belt and sort of expanding, um, I know that you've got sort of your own sort of business. So you've got BJW Productions and you also have Ben Ward's Big Band. Could you tell us a little bit about that, please? Sure. Uh, so BJW Productions is a company I started not so long ago, a few months back, late 2020. Um, as a company that can kind of put on, um, you know, both amateur and professional theatre, but a, a kind of a really high level. And yeah, we're rehearsing three shows at the moment, which are, I mean, they're sounding really awesome and it's going to be great watching them, um, you know, progress through the rehearsal period. Um, and yeah, the, the Ben Ward Big Band, <laughs> I started when I was about 17, so a few years back, um, which is, you know, apart from theatre, my other passion is jazz music. And so I kind of wanted it in the, in the same vein, really, a, a place to play at that kind of the higher level. Mm. And yeah, it's been, um, that's been really fun. We've, um, 
we've done quite a few concerts although obviously not recently but um <laughs> yeah we get a lot of um a lot of really good guys playing and it's it's good fun yeah excellent now you said that sort of jazz is a really big sort of influence for you does that sort of feed into a lot of your own sort of like music and inspiration when you're working on things for sure i think um as a, yeah like you say my my big influence is jazz and also theatre and I think when, when I tell people that they seem to think they're two completely different kind of path pathways through music but I don't, I don't think that's true I think there's a lot in common and I think jazz as a genre has a lot of the same performance and you mm. know, pu public facing aspects uh, as theatre and I think I was going to say, yeah. if anything, there's a lot of sort of theatre that does incorporate jazz and things. If anything, you'd think they'd go hand in hand really well. Absolutely. I, I think that's definitely true. There's um, especially the more modern theatre shows. They use a lot, a lot of the same kind of aspects as as jazz music, which I think has let me, you know, learn, use skills that I've learned in one one genre and apply them across across the board, which has been yeah, really useful. Mm. Now, are there any sort of composers or musicians out there who've inspired you during sort of your theatrical and jazz career? Definitely, yeah. Um, anyone who knows me will know that I am, um, th theatrical wise, I'm a big fan of Pasek and Paul, mm. who are, yeah, they're two also quite young composers, but um, they're incredible. Their, their, their writing is really, really clever. Um, and also people th more theatrically as well, like um, Jason Robert Brown, who in particular takes a lot of influence from jazz. So I, I find that really inspiring how he's fused the two, the two genres as well, definitely. Mm. And that's inspired you a lot in sort of your work going forwards. Excellent. Um, now, your instrument of choice is the saxophone, so tenor and baritone, am I correct? Uh, that's right, yeah. What drew you to the saxophone in the first place? Because it's a very, it's a very niche instrument thing. You know, I've certainly never seen that many people play saxophone. It is quite niche, and um, I, I really wish I had a lovely poetic story to tell you about how, <laughs> how I was drawn to it. Um, but all that happened was I, I was having piano lessons when I was about five or six and my piano teacher also taught the saxophone. <laughs> and then one day I thought, oh, yeah, I could give that a go. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. And it's as you say, it's really been my focus and I really love playing it. So, yeah, it's been nice to have as well as having the two genres, theatre and jazz. It's been nice to have saxophone and piano as you know, two different ways of getting getting music out there. Mm. I mean, yeah, definitely. I think it's great that you've got both because you can do both sort of classical and more sort of modern and sort of jive and jazz type thing. I think that's great. Like, I, to be honest, think if you can play sort of recorder at a good level, you're getting somewhere because I am hopeless of instruments. I think I'd just be the one ding in the triangle in the corner. <laughs> Well, someone's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just run on at the end, like, ding, that's me done for the day. <laughs> now, you actually do play your saxophone quite a bit with the Magic of Motown UK tour. How did you get involved with this? Cool. So um, that, um, yeah, that's been really great fun. I've played it maybe 10, 15, 20 times over the past few years. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's been some of my my favorite favorite gigs you know playing to a few thousand people is terrifying don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got into that through um a friend of mine a trumpet player called steve bland and he's basically in charge of all the the brass instruments for that tour and i think one day he must have been incredibly desperate to, <laughs> nobody else could do it because he rang me up and asked whether i'd do it tomorrow i think he said <laughs> so i said yeah i'll give it a go and yeah it was incredible it's a, a lot of fun and i've been lucky enough that i guess i did enough of a good job that he wanted me back <laughs> a bit more yeah oh that sounds amazing so um how often does this event take place and is it annual or biannual so it's um in usual times they, they haven't done anything this year for obvious reasons but 
they tour pretty much on a permanent basis. So they do two or three shows a week, basically full time. Oh, wow. And yeah, um, they don't have obviously brass players on all of them. It's mainly the, you know, the big arenas that they book that for. Mm. But yeah, they're, um, yeah, they're touring a lot in usual times. I don't know how well, unfortunately, they're going to recover after after the COVID year. But hopefully, yeah, hopefully they'll be back up soon and I can get some mm. more playing in. I'd like to hope they'd bounce back because I, uh, uh, me personally, in addition to theatre, live music, I have been missing that so much, just actually going and listening to somebody playing music for me. Definitely. It's a, it's a whole different experience live, isn't it? Than, um, mm, definitely. Than over Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's just a mishmash over Zoom, I find. You can never coordinate <laughs> <laughs> no, with the best now, will in the world. <laughs> <laughs> now, you said earlier that you also play piano as well, and you have had a career as a pianist and accompanist, sort of both in London and in New York. Can you tell us about some of your experience? So, were you in the West End, Broadway, and how did these two cities differ when you were working there? Yeah, for sure. Um, I've yeah I've never though I've never actually played a West End or Broadway show yet <laughs> um I have been, I've been lucky enough that I've worked with quite a few West End and Broadway performers but obviously like you said in London and in New York I think um yeah London is kind of the goal for me where, where I'd like to mm. after finishing uni where I'd like to to move and work full time so it's been great working with these guys um, and I think it's <laughs> the thing that stands out for me about that kind of work is how high pressure it is. <laughs> There's um, absolutely no room for getting anything wrong at all. <laughs> you turn up and you do it perfectly or they don't ask you back, which is oh God. very cutthroat and <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Even now, having done it quite a bit. And yeah, um, New York wise, I was coming up for a year ago now last february i was over in new york for a couple of meetings and mm -hmm. i um i did a recording with a guy called michael lee brown who had just finished playing evan hansen in dear evan hansen on broadway mm. oh wow so th that was a yeah as you can imagine an incredible experience it was <laughs> again terrifying <laughs> playing music that um that he's obviously been singing every day for three years and mm. then so he knows it backwards and forwards and you know you have to kind of try and live up to that but yeah it was a lot of fun <laughs> oh it sounds it have you ever had like a little fangirl moment whenever you've met sort of like <laughs> performer you're really into <laughs> oh yes all the time and you have to um you have to hide it while they're there and put on this really professional face. And then as soon as they leave the room, you go, ah, it was oh, there. I was in the same room as this, this person. <laughs> See, I think that's where you and me differ because I, I don't think I could, I'd just be there. Like, I love you. They'd be like, okay, please just get on. Yeah. With it. And I'm saying with dogs, I remember going to a client's director came out and his puppy ran out and I was like, I'm just ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a dog <laughs> definitely priorities <laughs> priorities pet the dog <laughs> <laughs> always oh sorry faffed my notes <laughs> um so how did you first make the move into becoming a musical composer then because you've done you've sort of played as you know as part of band yourself and then you've made the move towards actually being a composer yourself what made you move towards that uh yes yeah, a good, good question uh i think it's it's always comes uh, composing in in any genre but especially in, in musical theater i think it always has to come from kind of a story you want to tell mm. as cringy and <laughs> as that sounds, I think, so the reason I, I'm obviously I'm writing a musical with um, with Adam at the moment called Upside Down. 
um, and the reason we decided to give that a go more seriously is because we think it, there's a story there that that you know that needs telling I think mm. and it's um it's a really hard thing to do and and to try and, <laughs> and make what you're writing a kind of a, a cohesive song or, or piece of theatre that's you know that could feasibly work in real life mm. um, but also not making it too similar to <laughs> anything else you've heard and liked <laughs> which is is so easily so easy to um subconsciously steal some someone else's song <laughs> but yeah no. it's um yeah it definitely doesn't come come naturally to me and it's um it's been a a challenge working towards getting something to you know a, a good level but it's been you know really rewarding as well for sure i was gonna say now that must be sort of both very challenging but very rewarding sort of what sort of inspires you while you're working on these kind of things and where do you draw a lot of inspiration from when you are composing these works uh yeah i mean yeah as you say it's um, incredibly rewarding and um, especially to hear these you know these really incredible performers performing something that you've written it's, mm. it's yeah surreal almost <laughs> i think in in terms of inspiration i think so much of it just comes from listening to other people's to, to other people's work and you know paying attention to the world around you at large you know listening to other people's stories and I think it's again as as cringy and um, as niche as that sounds I think it's so much of theatre reflects what's going on in real life mm, oh definitely it's a mirror to real life I think a lot of the time oh, for um, sure so what sort of, can you give us a little bit of background on what Upside Down is about? Or is it a very hush-hush at the minute? <laughs> I don't know whether, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I can. Adam might shout at me, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you won't so know, upside, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him, yeah. <laughs> upside Down is, um, as an overview, it's about um, this young Catholic boy in America who's struggling with his sexuality and thinking you know that he might be gay or he might have these um these feelings for people that he doesn't know how to explain and then mm. um, the show basically deals with how he he manages or doesn't manage without giving away any spoilers <laughs> to to reconcile those those feelings with his his catholic faith mm. um, which is an emotional challenge to write and and rehearse but I think it's um, a story that's never quite been told in that way, which is is what we were aiming for when when writing it. Mm. That sounds really interesting. I'm looking forward to when that actually gets fully released. Have you decided if it's going to be an online thing at the minute, or if it's going to be actually performed in front of an audience live? So we're hoping to have finished a kind of a first draft of the the whole show at some point over the next next few months but um hopefully we'd love to do it with a live cast so that that's got to be the the goal in a post-covid mm -hmm. world yeah and you've also composed other music before so you've composed a song called different than before is this part of upside down or was this a separate sort of project that you worked on yeah so different than before is a song from upside down it is um the first song that Adam and I had kind of seriously considered was any in any way finished. <laughs> so yeah, we, we were lucky enough earlier, early last year to get that recorded by um, David Breeds, who's a, a West End performer. And that was, as I said, it's really surreal to hear someone of that, that level and talent mm. performing something that, that you've written. It's yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. I listened to it and it was, such a lovely piece of music i think you should be really really pleased for that it was wonderful to hear where Thank you. where can people find it if they want to listen to it themselves it's on um to give a little sales pitch all good music streaming services <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on spotify and apple music it's, it's on youtube it's it's everywhere and i think i make about 0.0004p for every listen so 
I'll, I'll be raking it in soon. <laughs> So you've heard it here. If you want to get a little snippet of Upside Down, find check out Different Than Before on all, on all good music <laughs> channels. <laughs> oh, now, you are, I, I would say, very young in the game for sort of what you're doing and you seem to be really successful at it. What advice would you give people that maybe want to follow a similar path to you? don't <laughs> <laughs> no I think um it's got to be it's, you've always got to be led by by having goals and you've got to have a clear goal in mind of, of where you want to be and then I think it's um it's important if you can to start making things happen rather than waiting for them to happen for you mm. you know it, it, especially in our industry there are there are so many ridiculously talented people, uh, too many for the amount of jobs. So I think you've got to actively push yourself out there and, you know, really do things that you're not comfortable with in the hope that you'll get comfortable with them, if that makes sense. Mm. And I think, yeah, and that, that would be my advice for anyone really, as much as I'm not sure I'm in much of a position to be given it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, it's, it's just important to, to focus on your goals and know what you need to do to get there. Mm. Properly apply yourself as well. I think, I think that is definitely very important because I think even if you could be the most talented person in the world, but if you just sit there and wait for something, there's, I don't think there's very many like moments where that genuinely happens. You do have to apply and put the hard work in if you want to get where you want to be. Absolutely. I mean, um, talent can only take you so far. I think mm. it's important to, yeah, as you say, the the standard of performers is so high that you, you've just got to meet that standard, and the only way you can you can meet that is by you know dedication and practice and you know hard work. Mm. Definitely, I fully agree with you, Ben, with that. Now, throughout your career, what has been the most memorable experience and it doesn't have to be a good one it could be <laughs> a surreal experience that you've had or a downright weird one <laughs> so um in a kind of um really awful memory that haunts me kind of way <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was once uh, a couple of years ago now i was um i was playing piano and conducting a a choir through some some music mm. just a, a, a little kind of concert you know maybe 30 40 people in the audience and I'd set a, an electric piano up on the stand in front of them and it was all fine and then the lights went down and it was it was time to play the first chord and I hit the first chord and the whole piano and stand collapsed and <gasps> hit the floor <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah that that is a memory I, I replay fairly often, and it's <laughs> definitely taught me to always check your keyboard stand. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would that would haunt my dreams if anything yeah. like that happened. I'm so clumsy as well. That is that that is the most awful thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you never live that down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to take a moment sort of pick everything off the floor and go right properly check this? <laughs> yeah yeah definitely you have to um, you had to kind of make it a joke you know <laughs> but inside you're dying <laughs> <laughs> you're like a clown smiling on the outside but yeah. <laughs> on the inside. absolutely yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay well to detract from that any positive memory <laughs> <laughs> so you're not haunted by that memory anymore no, I need to need to clear my head yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the, the the most positive memory of, of my career so far I have is you know as I was saying earlier recording in in New York with with Michael the, the former Evan was you know a, a massive it was a massive jump up from anything I'd done up to then mm. and it was you know as, as I said it was incredible to be working with someone at that level in in New York City which is 
you know, whatever anybody says, all creative people want to be in New York at least a little bit. It's mm. the, I was the gonna creative say, capital. Would you ever want to move out? Because you said sort of the goal is London, but would you ever consider living in New York for a period of time? I'd absolutely love to. Yeah, I think um, I'm currently looking at a, a few master's courses that are in New York to do after my oh, degree. Oh, amazing. You know, as kind of a, you know, spending a year in New York, but without the pressure of having to work, <laughs> I think. So, yeah, if, if anyone fancies donating a ridiculous amount of money to me to, to fund that, that would be incredible. <laughs> or alternatively, keep listening. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> keep listening to his songs, those pennies will build up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if everyone puts it on repeat 24-7. <laughs> Oh dear, now I've got to go to the elephant in the room, the pandemic. How have you yourself been coping with this? Well, I think it's been, it's been awful really, hasn't it, for, ev for everyone. I don't think there's a single person out there who'll say they've had a nice time. It's... Yeah, I'd have to say though, it's probably not the worst year I've ever had, I have to say. It's, been, it's, <laughs> just, it's just been a nuisance, but I wouldn't say it's been the worst year I've ever had, I have to say. <laughs> no, I get that. I think, um, yeah, I think we've all had to adapt to, obviously, th mm. this new way of working, always being on Zoom, <laughs> which is obviously for someone who works in in live performance it's pretty much killed all of my work but what it has meant is i've been able to you know invest more time into to learning new skills learning you know how how to work online and mm. i've been doing a lot more teaching which is something i i really enjoy but i've never usually had time to do okay. so i guess it and yeah i think you're right it's been a nuisance of a year but um there are there are positive things there you said about your um, teaching, what sort of teaching have you been doing for people then? Is it sort of singing? Is it been sort of sheet reading? Yeah, um, all of the above, really. I um, I do a lot of vocal coaching, which is people wanting kind of singing technique lessons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, reading music, music theory, I've, I've done a lot of that. And as well, things like acting through song, which... Um, a lot of people struggle with mm. this is a really abstract thing to approach but i think having the grounding in theater as well as you know straight music has given me kind of an insight into that that maybe some other people don't have mm. so it's been, been nice to be able to well to attempt to teach some of that well i think year. that i think that is a great skill to have because i think people don't really realize that sort of it's like oh just just you know emote through a song and then you get to it you're like well, how actually am i <laughs> putting across at this i find that like i think you sort of you don't think it's gonna be that hard and then you apply you're like oh actually <laughs> definitely and it um the more you look at it the more complicated it gets because <laughs> mm. you just keep spotting more things and more more different inflections you could put in and i think um as important as it is sometimes you've got to think um Okay, let's look at it on, a, on an overall level rather than word by word, mm. as some people will, will have you do. But it's, um, it's a really interesting process and it's fun to watch how lots of different actors approach the same song, mm. in such, you know, massively different ways. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Now, you've got quite a few projects coming up though haven't you Ben so can you tell us about these in addition sort of upside down which you briefly covered earlier sort of what other projects have you got in the pipeline for this year so yeah we've got um, a couple of things planned for the next next few months um BJW Productions first show is Edges which is going to be streaming on the 31st of March that's a, a song cycle by Pasek and Paul, who, as I said, are my musical idols. Mm. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been really awesome rehearsing that. And then the cast we have, who we haven't announced yet, are phenomenal, incredibly talented. Um, so, yeah, you, you should definitely get your tickets for that. <laughs> and um, on top of that, I'm also in rehearsals um, with you for Bear, <laughs> <laughs> which is, again, a really 
a really important show, a great piece of theatre. And I'm sure you'll agree we've got a, a really phenomenal cast on that as well. Very talented cast for it. I'm excited for people to watch this because the story is great. The cast is phenomenal. The, the music direction I've heard is phenomenal. <laughs> I've heard that too. Do you know who it is? <laughs> Some guy called like Ben Ward, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously the podcast very own Adam Guest is the director for Bear as well. So we've got a great collection of people working on Bear. For Adam. sure. Adam is um Adam is a really incredible director and it's um yeah, it's been amazing to work with him. He's got such a clear vision of what he wants from the show, which is makes my job so easy. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you know, as you know, as long as he doesn't listen to this, because he'll get a big head. But he is—he's um, the loveliest guy you could find. So, yeah, yeah. he is lovely. Adam is. <laughs> <laughs> we won't let him hear this bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other projects after Edges and Bear? Have you got sort of anything that you'd like to do sort of further down the line at some point? Yeah, I'll. Um without giving anything away there's there's always little projects cooking in the back of my head <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah hopefully um if these shows go well we will be um we'll be back on the road in you know kind of late summer early autumn to be doing live shows again rather than mm, streaming I ones so. and <laughs> i hope so too mm. and i think that yeah that'll be a it'll be an exciting way of working again so um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and hopefully we'll get some some live theatre out soon. Oh, definitely. So if people want to follow up on what you're doing, where are the best places for them to find you and what you what projects you've got coming up? So um, a lot, most of the projects I'm doing will be done through BJW Productions. You can find on on Facebook and Instagram. So yeah, if you give those pages a follow and um, we'll make sure to keep keep them up to date with whatever whatever's new. Excellent. And now one fun question to sort of finish mm -hmm. off. Now, it doesn't have to be the musical instrument you're most proficient in, but as a musician, I want to know what instrument would you pick to best describe your personality? Oh, what a question. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the trumpet because oh. it can... Um, it plays very loud and high and squeaky and um, you always know when it's in the room, which I think um, people <laughs> will say is also true of me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a great answer. <laughs> well, on, on that high note, thank you so much for joining me, Ben. You've been a wonderful guest today and I hope you've had fun. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. So yes, ladies and gentlemen listening out there, if you want to follow up on Ben, check out BJW Productions pages. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. You've been a great guest today. Over to you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we've we've had a great episode today. It's been lovely to hear you see you guys again and to hear from people and hear from Ben and the, the things that he's doing. So I think that's about the time that we've got, unfortunately. So Ooh. I'm going to, what? Ben, I was going to say, well, what that means is, Adam, uh, get yourself gone. I feel like I've not got past it. Okay. It was interesting last week, we didn't have you two on, on the show other than in pre-recorded form. Uh, so you, dealt, you were just left in there for a whole another week. So what, what was your experience like there? Uh, it was great. You know, I yeah. got to eat. Uh, I got sunlight. I got some vitamin D. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, can I stay out again, please? No. Um, right. Off you go, Adam. All right, then. I'll we'll see you later, see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Yes. Bye everyone. What's going over that? Never mind. Bye. Ben, did Bye you remember short edition this time? Uh, yes, but uh, food rations. We're running out. We might need to go and get some more, some more oh, slot really? for him. Oh, um, okay, we'll make a note of that. Well, on that note, we are going to wrap up this week's episode of the podcast. Thank you so yeah, much for he's listening. It's he's, he's just a distraction always. Um, I've completely lost my threads. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching. If you listen to... <laughs> Just completely derailed the show every week. Who does? <laughs> oh my God. Right.
Oh, thank you so much for listening and watching. If you uh, were listening, you listen to us on Anchor or any of the other things, we could leave a rating or review. If you're watching us over on YouTube, please subscribe to us and uh, ding that notification bell. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you want to support us more, you can follow us on our social media channels. You can find us on all of those at Encore Offstage Pod. Or alternatively, if you want to support us even further than that, we do have a Patreon, which will be linked to in the description. And we've got a load of great rewards on there too, including the opportunity to come and guest host an episode. What about that? Uh, and that's it, I think. Uh, so all that remains to be said is from Adam, Lucy and myself. We will see you all next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>